So we are in Wales. We parked up at this spot last night in the rain and we woke up this morning and it was completely misted over and we couldn't see a thing. But now the mist is lifted, we've got a beautiful view and we're gonna go for a little walk and explore some of the coves down on the coast. How do we get down? <laughs> Don't know, Jen. <laughs> I think it's going to be difficult. I don't think it's going to be difficult at all. I think we're going to be able to walk around there and there's going to be a well-defined path, handrails and all. I think we're going to have to scramble. Good job, I've got my scrambling shoes on. Let's have a look at your scrambling shoes. Never done much trad before, but it'd be cool to be able to go down there and climb back up again. Like everywhere we've parked up in the UK recently, we just found loads of plastic rubbish and it really breaks our hearts, doesn't it? Yeah. Just seeing such like beautiful areas, just we'll take it with us and we'll dispose of it in the right manner. What a woman. Careful in them scrambling shoes. Not normally bothered by stuff like this. Feel a little bit sketchy today. That's definitely the end there, isn't it? You can't go any further than that. Yeah. That's where we wanted to go, down there somewhere. Kinda doesn't look so achievable. I bet you can get down there, eh? onto that end point. You can, yeah. You want to? Don't know. I could go a little bit closer and see what it's like. Do we go a bit further to find another way down? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. See if we can get down. We need to get down to a beach, don't we? We promised these lovely people beaches and coves and all at the moment, like, we failed to provide. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Come on, then. Come on, then. <laughs> Look, there, we can get down. Steps. Take it in the view. We were talking the other day about how we feel like every time we touch base back at the sea level, it feels like we get a full reset. We spend so much time up in the mountains and it's really nice every so often to just come back, touch our feet in the sea and we feel like a fresh start and we can just go again. Mm. It makes you think about the makes you think about the last time you were at the sea and then almost puts sort of some things in per, into perspective. Yeah, especially when we're travelling because we could say say on our journey back through Europe we spent a bit of time down in Greece on some of the islands so we spent a bit of time in the sea there and then we travelled through landlocked countries pretty much all the way 
up until we hit the coast of France to get to catch our ferry back to the UK. So visiting the sea for the first time when we got back to the UK was a nice like reset point. The last time we'd been in the sea was all the way down in Greece and it just gave us time to reflect on what had happened between then and that moment that we were dipping our feet in the south coast of England. Mm. And now we, as we come to kind of the end of our our time back in the UK, it's nice again to come down to the sea and spend some time just just kind of reflecting on the past couple of months and mm. what we've been up to, what we've learned and and the time that we've been able to spend with our friends and family. Yeah. I feel like the sea makes you doesn't make you reflect that it's a nice place. Yeah, it's definitely a special place for a lot of people and although we love love spending although we love spending a lot of time in mountains there is just something that draws you towards the sea. Uh, I feel like water. I feel like nobody can deny that feeling. No. But like you said, yeah. but like you said, as <laughs> as we sit here reflecting, we do normally have a rule where we have to get our feet in and we haven't yet, so you going first? Maybe you are. I mean, the weather doesn't look that great, but I like it is warm, it's isn't warm, it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that doesn't relate to the temperature of the sea, though. No, and the sea is looking a bit crazy today. Feet in the water, reset button hit. Let's go back to Lola. So going back to this bottle that Priya found earlier, it's made us think. Well, we've been thinking about it for quite a while, to be honest, and talking about it, but we went into Aldi for our shop the other day, and we were just surprised. Well, we were just hit by such a huge wall of plastic, and we were just so surprised about just how much is in there, and how much of it isn't recyclable either. It's, they've all like new products new things are being brought out have been labeled on the back as not yet recycled which i just can't and neither of us it just baffles me it absolutely baffles me why we can't produce things that can either be recyclable be recycled or just don't need to be produced they just fruit all the fruit and veg are just individually wrapped or i think it was kiwis in this particular one i'm talking about there was a bag of six kiwis one of them real thick plastic bags that can't yet be recycled and just why why are we doing it what's the point and normally the fruit and veg that is loose tends to start being more expensive now than the one that's being individually packaged after coming back from being in europe it's just so sad to see i just feel like they're so much more set up for it over there we've tried to shop as plastic free as we can over the past year but especially in the supermarkets we just feel like we're fighting a losing battle so we've set ourselves the goal from now on in to try and be 90 percent plastic free on all of our food shopping hoping to prove not only to you guys anyone watching but to ourselves as well that it is possible and we can do it so we've had a little google and we know that there's a green grocers 10 minutes down the road so we're going to start there and see if we can get all we need for the week to come. Hopefully plastic free. Let's do it.
So far so good, I think that was pretty successful. We'll have a little run through of what we've got. We've got a mango, mm. a lovely juicy mango. Lovely mangoes. A pair of pretty ripe avocados. Make some guacamole. A bunch of bananas. Now, this is why we've given ourselves wiggle room on the plastic front. They do have stickers on them and I don't know yeah, they're they're like stickers are always coated in like a bit of plastic, so it's not ideal, but it's better than it coming in a plastic bag. That was a keen eye on you there. I just, <laughs> didn't even <laughs> wouldn't have even noticed that they had stickers on, let alone plastic stickers. But sweet potatoes, nice cabbage, nice cauliflower, carrots. In a plastic free bag, in a net bag. We've had the net bags for quite a while now and it's just always nice to be able to feel like we're not using those single use flimsy things that they give you in the supermarket. No one ever seems to question it, no one ever seems to mind. They're pretty, um, like, they're really lightweight so it doesn't actually affect like the cost of our shopping either which is always nice so carrots peppers lovely and a bag of onions is that all oh is that all done a couple of granny smiths so i was thinking this second ago actually we did well obviously i feel like we did good but that's our first shop oh, i we went to the bakers as well didn't we oh yeah we went to the bakery because the bakers we wanted to see, get a feel for how it would be kind of doing a bit of a bigger shop, going to different places to get our different items, so groceries at the grocery store, bread from the bakery. There's a lot we still need to find milk out though. From the milk plant? I don't know. Nope. I, don't so know got, I don't know if we can get milkman deliveries to the van. <laughs> we got lovely. Fresh life. Look at that. What we didn't manage to get was yoghurt, which might prove yes. difficult, like we said before. It's something we have for our breakfast pretty much every morning. But we're happy to make do, aren't we, for, for the sakes of trying to really push to reduce our single-use plastics and even our recyclable plastics, because I think there's a lot coming out at the moment where most of the plastics that we put in for recycling doesn't actually get recycled. No. So I think the real challenge is going to come when we have to go to the supermarket to stock up on like more of our dried, dried foods or non-fresh foods, um, things that would typically come in a packet like pasta or fajita wraps. <laughs> we love both of those it's, things. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be it. It's going to be a bit of a difficult one for us, isn't it? Yeah. We can do it. It kind of gives you a good feeling inside, doesn't it? The feeling that we've decided to consciously make this decision and we've come. It's nice going to the bakery to buy a loaf of bread. Yeah. And spoke to the old dear down in the greengrocers and it was, <laughs> it was nice, wasn't form. it? <laughs> yeah, it was nice. It's different. I think if, if you're ever tempted to try and make the changes, I think not even just for the reduction of single-use plastics. I think it's just a great way of getting back in touch with your communities, going to the local markets and local bakers and you've got your butchers and... Your Fish market. Candlestick makers. We ended up in a lovely spot with the sun shining upon us, which is just fantastic. What, are you going to do chilli? I think so, yeah. I fancy chilli. We're going to use some of this fresh food that we've just bought and make ourselves a lovely veg chilli. You're going to make us a lovely veg chilli anyway. If anyone watching has got any tips or recommendations for going plastic free then drop us a comment below and we'll check it out and we'll keep you up to date on how our plastic free life is going. Yeah.